Okay guys, so I'm going to be showing you in this video the three step method that I took that completely changed my trading journey. So from going from doing it all day every single day for an entire year, not seeing any progress to simply changing three things and having a system in place that brought me consistency within the matter of four months. If you do want to see more of this technique and approach used, join the community completely for free. The link is down below, but I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing now on a daily basis. So step one, as we can see here, I've got, we are trying to find the four hour and the one hour intention. So what I mean by that is we're using the, the one hour and the four hour to figure out what the biases because don't forget we don't we don't want to be trying to build a picture on what the next few days or what the whole entire week's going to look like what we're doing is we're trying to figure out what the next one hour candle or two or the next one hour uh, four hour candle is going to look like because essentially all we're doing we're trading session open so we want to know what the next couple of hours are going to be looking like and it's so much easier to predict what the next couple of hours are going to look like than the next two days because there's so many different things that can occur which can completely change the outcome of what's going to happen in three days time so you've always got to look at it as we're just trying to figure out and adapt to what price is showing us currently it's, you don't want to predict the market too much because then you're going to be set on an entry that you might be waiting for for six hours but then without even realizing the setup is completely changed and you're going to hit stop loss so that's a little tip there as well so what we're doing is we're looking for two different things we're either looking for price to be approaching a point of interest because if we're approaching a point of interest then on the lower time frames we can look at you know continuation models continuation entries right and then the other one is if we're inside of a point of interest on the high time frame because if we're inside of a higher time frame point of interest even if it doesn't sell or buy to the you know previous external structure even if we just see a bit of manipulation in the market on the four hour candle that can still provide a one to four or a one to ten hour trade on the one minute so looking at the hourly four and the hourly one just for where price is currently sitting what is price wanting to do that's going to transform your trading now moving on to step two as you can see we've got find the m15 and the m5 intention the reason why i'm saying intention is because intention you're trying to figure out what price needs to do you, you got to completely scrap the idea of seeing price do what you want to do because you're never going to be making money we've got to build a picture an image build a storyline of what price needs to do so if it's if it's targeting external highs if price is retracing we're going to see some type of liquidity raid which you know gives the market the fuel and strength to then continue up to the the external highs so then you're only going to be entering positions once it's taken liquidity not before not after so looking at what the m15 and the m5 is showing is then also going to massively benefit you when it comes down to the one minute time frame because the one minute time frame scares and puts off a lot of people because you know there is a lot of noise and that's why you try to get rid of the noise in the one minute because you understand you're only going down to the one minute when the m5 you know is in the perfect conditions and what i mean by that is let's have a look over here right so price here we can see price is pulling down we've got a higher time frame point of interest price pushes pushes down just misses the point of interest comes up we've fueled the market with more liquidity we've then come down inducing the lows or the early buyers and then we can start looking for the buyers right so that's what we're going to do now we're going to jump over to step three so as you can see here what is the m1 intention so if i break this down we can see price is coming down to the poi taps into the poi has a nice reaction not giving us an entry however if you see we have no liquidity we have no lows so what liquidity looks like is when there are lows so this point in the market that's where the money is sat so we want to see price push down taking all of that liquidity from this low and then pushing back up so here in this example the first point of interest with liquidity is this low so that's why we see price push down get a bit of a reaction from all of the silly traders trying to buy off the order block then we induce the low we take out all of the traders once we've induced it that's when we look for our entries waiting for liquidity inducement concept entries is the most aggressive and rewarding style of trading you can approach and get so if you want to watch any more of that obviously join the discord and watch all of my previous videos but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to give you a few examples over on the charts to 
give you a better image of what we are looking for live. So we could even look straight away here. So as you can see, price is coming up. We're seeing an uptrend, price is coming up. Price is retracing over here. However, there's no liquidity in this leg. So where's the first point of liquidity? The first point of liquidity is gonna be here. Price then comes down, takes that liquidity, and then it buys up. Here, price comes up. This one's a bit more tricky, so make sure you're listening to what I say because this is a piece of information that the majority of traders on YouTube will not tell you because they either don't know it or they're not gonna tell you because they want you to pay for it. So, we need to know that all the blocks aren't mitigated. So what I mean by mitigated is when we see an order block here, if price taps into it, that means it's mitigated. So if price then comes up and then comes back down, it's not then gonna buy because this whole order block has been mitigated. So this example is no longer valid and that's why you'd have to look for a further down POI. So as you can see here, on this leg we have liquidity. However, this point of price mitigated this order block. So as price is coming down, this is no longer liquidity because if price goes beneath this, it's not gonna continue up because it's inside of that mitigated order block. So what do we need to do then? We then mark that out as our first point of liquidity. And we now know that there are gonna be no entries above this level. We have to see price push beneath. So then if we have a little look, price then comes down. And as you can see, the reason why we wouldn't have taken entries there is because we're not entering off of first taps. If you enter off of the first tap, you're not waiting for any slowdown or reaction in the market. Price, like this example, can just go down straight into your stop loss. So the reason why we wait for a reaction is because if it gives signs of weakness, automatically you're gonna have more confidence. So that is just a little thing that I'm always doing and so is my traders. And what I mean by reaction, let's just pretend our POI was here, right? All I'm waiting to see is price push down into the point of interest, come away, candle close, and that's the entry I would have taken. So that's that. Even here, for instance, price is coming up. We've got our liquidity here. We've got the previous range here. So this is another good example. As you can see, all of these little order blocks have all been mitigated. So let's have a look at where the first possible entry could be. All of these order blocks are mitigated, mit mitigated, continue looking to the left. We have an order block here that hasn't been mitigated. So the first point of liquidity in this example is gonna be here. And the reason why I mark it there, because like I said, where everything is mitigated, there's no way price is gonna continue buying above this level. So all I'm doing is literally just saving myself from marking out every single low and then just having a super messy chart okay so that there is perfect as you can see price comes down comes back up isn't coming up with volume all of these candles as you can see have no volume price and continues coming back up and then we get a candle here with volume hardly any wicks that there would be my entry and then even if you're just targeting previous highs or if we even yeah we'd target external highs which is gonna be this high over here. Drag that across. That there would be your take profit, which is a 10R position. So that there is the exact, exact process I am looking for in order to be catching, you know, these one to fives, one to tens. And another thing with this is you're not gonna be catching opportunities like this every single day. I'm only catching one to fives, one to tens, maybe three or four times a month. I only take between one and three trades a week. I didn't take any trades last week, and this week just gone, I took one trade. So you've got to understand with the less trades you take, the more money you're gonna make. And that's not just because you're not risking your money and you're just being too conservative. It's just purely off the basis that if your win rate and your risk to reward is high, you could take five losses in a row over three weeks and then on the fourth week you catch a one to ten and then you've made what five or six percent so you've got to bear it in mind with how highly rewarding this approach is it can be a tough it can be a ball lake it is it can be aggressive with the liquidity inducement entries but as soon as you study it 
back and forth, hours and hours and hours of work, it's going to click. And when it clicks, you're going to be trading better than the majority of traders you see online. So make sure you're in the Discord, you're joining the webinars, you're sending me messages asking for help, and I'm going to help you. So I'm going to leave the video here, and I want to see you guys in the next video.